Hello there, it's Sandy with the long-awaited Dutch Bunny portrait card that I previewed a few weeks ago. And this bunny is from Colorado Craft Company. It's a little wide for an A2 size card. Especially when you put a body on it, it fills the whole card front. But I'm going to give you some tips on how to handle that when we get to the finished portion at the end. But the coloring comes first. And I'm using Copic markers. The pictures that I looked at of a Dutch bunny had a tinge of purple to them. And depending on the light or the type of bunny or all different kinds of things, you might see blues in there. Sometimes it's fun to put another color underneath because then when you put your grays and your blacks over top, they have the flavor of a different color underneath of them. And that just changes them a little bit so they're not just kind of a plain, dull, kind of a cool gray or something. It just adds a little little flavor. And you'll see about the ears in a few minutes because I'll explain why I put some pink in there even though they don't have pink in their ears. For the shading, on a lot of stamps, they will show you where the shading goes. And there's lots of little hairlines on this, little fuzzy marks. And I'm following along those for the black pen that I'm using, the black color. And then I'm going to expand from that and blend that a little bit with a slightly lighter gray and then go to a lighter. And that's how I'm going to build the black fur. When you're talking about something with black fur, if you just put all black in there, it's going to look like a black blob. And this comes from someone who draws her black and white dog all the time. Her eyes would disappear if there were no highlights in there. So look for the highlights because it'll still read as black as long as you have some good contrast in there and some good black shadows. But you do need to have some kind of highlights in there. Since I've got that blue violet underneath, this is going to have some a little feeling of purple highlights. Most people won't notice it, but it's different than if I just used cool gray markers. So try that sometime and see if you can tell the difference. Maybe color half of an image with an undercoat of a color and then half without and see if your eye can tell the difference. Sometimes it's just a matter of training your eyes, but I suggest that that it is true. So I'm putting some gray over that pink. The insides of their ears are thin, and so you can kind of see the flesh through it. So that's where the pink comes in, giving that a little bit of different color to the insides of the ears. So the bunny that I was looking at had just kind of some general pink around the nose, just some real soft areas. And then I'm going to make yellow flowers. These are uneven flowers. They're not evenly distributed. So one of the things that I wanted to do was add in some shadows first with a purple a complement of yellow, and then go in and add some negative spaces because there can be openings in these because they're very loose flowers. This little head wreath that she's wearing just has some openings in it. So I'm going to draw those openings in by putting the color of the bunny that's behind it. And that's going to make them look a little bit more open and loose of a wreath, that kind of thing. So if you're using a, a brown bunny, put some brown in there. Next is the body, because this is a headless bunny stamp. And if you want to ground it, then put a body on there. For a bunny like this, technically the shoulders are white, but this would be kind of seeing a little bit of the blackness around the outside edges of the back part of the body. So I'm going to call it good, even though it, the bunny that I was looking at would have had just white all over. And then I'll add some white shading coming up from the bottom. A lot of that's going to get trimmed off because I stamped this on a much bigger piece than I was going to need. And then I'm going to add some shading around the chin and the mouth because the shading that you put under the chin and then at the bottom side of the head is going to be the stuff that adds depth and dimension. So it looks like the bunny's head rests in front of and above the, the top of the chest and where the neck would be. I guess bunnies don't really have necks very much. And then I decided to add some shading onto the nose as well so that I could have the snout look like it's popping out. So the, the white white is on the tip of the nose. And then I went to my white pen and I knocked back some of those black lines in the that were drawn in that because I wanted it to appear whiter. And then some of the whiskers were getting lost in the black. So I just went over those with a white pen in the area that was black. So now for the crazy trimming. I wanted to trim the left, right, and top so that they were into the image, that the ears would pop out from it. 
So I had to, on the, the one side, I could just stop trimming before I hit that spot. On the other side, I had to mark it on the back so I knew when to stop my trimmer. The top is going to be even harder. So what I'm going to do is trim into the ears, just in the black area, because I can hide those cut lines, because I need to be able to bend those ears when I do the trimming. And you'll see what I mean. I'm disassembling the trimmer. There's a safety bar on here that you can unscrew and pull out. So I could shove it in there and bend the ears so that that white part is the only part that gets cut straight across. You could also do that with a knife, but this seemed to be a little bit easier to do. And then I just put scotch tape on it and no one is going to see that there's cut marks there and I have ears that pop out. I cut a yellow border so that I can have some yellow before it hits the black card base and popped all of that on dimensional adhesive. The inside could have an Easter sentiment, a hello sentiment, kind of whatever. And it's going to be a really cute card to send in the spring. So Easter is coming up right away. If you're not done with your Easter cards yet, you best get on it. So next, I want to tell you about the video hop that I'm part of. And it's for Jessica Frost Ballas, who just reached 10,000 subscribers. And she has gathered a bunch of prizes. So please do go to the link in the doobly-doo and that will show you where to go next, which video to go see, how to go register for prizes. But before you go, if you have not hit the subscribe button and the little bell beside it, then please do so so you can get notified when my next video goes up. And I will see you again very soon. Have a wonderful day and a happy Easter. And I'll see you soon. Take care. <music>